In this module, we're going to talk about sargeability, one of those words that sounds kind of made up, like compressive or performant. really does have real meaning for database people. Your next query, I'm going to say where month of last access date equals 7. Any July. I don't care what year it is, I just want to know all the people who last accessed the system in July. Now, when I was a developer, I thought the SQL Server would take an index by date, jump to the first July, read all the records, then jump to the next July, read all the records. It would save a lot of time. It's only like one twelfth of the data, right? Because I know the stuff is stored in order by date. That's actually not how SQL Server works. SQL Server looks at your query and says, I can't use efficiently an index with your search arguments, S-A-R-G, search arguments. That's where the sargability thing comes in, or sargeability comes in. This query is not sargeable. Now, SQL will technically use the index, but what it's going to do is run this function on every single row in that index. It uses the index only because it's the narrowest copy of the table that has all of the fields it needs. It wouldn't care which order the index was in. It doesn't even have to start with last access date. Last access date could be the last field in the index. It won't matter. SQL Server just rolls up its sleeves and says, all right, here's the deal. I need to run the month function on every single row. Give me the tiniest copy of the table that has that. Let's go get started. Now, SQL Server uses the index totally wildly inefficiently in much the same way that Jeremiah and I use rental cars in Las Vegas. And you do not want to know what we do with rental cars in Las Vegas. Great picture of a time when he and I got a Cayman and a Maserati, and let's just leave it at that. That stays in Las Vegas. So this ends up costing the same as querying all of the rows. If we look at set statistics IO output, it shows 13,000 logical reads either way. That's what the, it costs to read the whole entire index. And actually, selecting where month of last access date equals 7 is even more expensive because we're going to run that month function on every single row. Remember, SQL Server only caches raw data, not query output. So if you run that query 100 times, it's going to go calculate the month function 100 times on every single row in the table. This sargeability concept applies to all kinds of functions out there, strings, date comparisons, and uh, ends up having a really big impact on the way that our queries work. Just generally speaking, I want to avoid functions in where clauses and in joins. You might be asking, what about user-defined functions? And that's another question that we'll leave for another module, because those come with their own surprise gotchas. My biggest concern when I'm dealing with this is the ability to use indexes appropriately, but my second biggest concern is what about the estimates that come back from my query? Before SQL Server goes to build that execution plan, it's going to look at statistics. It has no statistics on things like the months of dates. So my estimated and actual number of rows can be way off. This is what one of the bigger problems with uh, statistics and user-defined functions is. Not only can we not use indexes efficiently, we can't use stats efficiently either. So we might guess, well, maybe there were only 100 users who logged in in July. And then we come back and there's a million of them. SQL Server does the best job it can with the limited information that it has. So let's try another one. Now let's go no functions whatsoever. Just Give me the users where the display name equals Brentos are. And you're going to want to look at the indexes that you have. The gray, the black, the white index. What's the narrowest index that has the fields that you need? Because none of these indexes are sorted by display name first. Some of them are sorted by display name. I'm sorry, some of them are sorted by last access date, but none by display name. Well, SQL Server is going to, again, use the index. I use this in uh, you know, loose quote marks. It's going to use my wide index, the gray indexes, because it's the narrowest copy of the table that has all of the fields it needs. They're not sorted in the right order. SQL Server is just surveying the landscape and going, well, this is the best option that I got. It has the least amount of pages, and I got to scan them all, so let's get started with this. 
This is why index usage DMVs are so interesting. It'll report that an index is getting used, but it's just getting scanned. Again, look at the number of logical reads, 13,000. SQL Server is using this index, but to scan the whole thing. This is why field order matters. When you're putting in, in the where clause, where something like display name equals Brent Ozar, if that field isn't the first one on the index, that index is going to get scanned. So it's not really going to get used appropriately. It's kind of like a sargeability concept, but here it's just that we didn't put the indexes in the right order. What if I added one? So let's add one, and I didn't give you this in printout just because it's pretty simple and straightforward. What if we just create an index on display name? Nothing else, not age or last access date, just display name. Show me the people who are Brento. Now, when I use that, when I run that query, boom, I get the nice combination of an index seek followed by a key lookup, because SQL Server is able to go directly on that display name index to Brent Ozar, get my ID, and then go back to the clustered index. Now, if I look at the amount of logical reads that we do, woohoo, we're down to just four. No, I'm sorry, six because we did that seek and then we turn around and grab the record that we need. That's pretty cool. And it even works with variables. Like if I've got a similar query here, I set up display name as a variable and then I pass in Brent Ozar. SQL Server figures it out with statistics. What am I going to need to do? Got it. Brent's right over here. But it doesn't always work. Look at this right here. Same exact query, but I've changed something on you behind the scenes. Notice that now I'm doing a clustered index scan. Not doing any kind of seek, I'm doing a clustered index scan. Even though I've got an index here on display name, the really brilliant people in here will figure out that that uh, uh, users table is now users2. This is a slightly different uh, table. And when you hover your mouse over the select statement, notice there's a yellow bang warning. When I hover my mouse over that, it says type conversion, implicit conversion. See, here's the thing. This is what I did that was kind of dirty behind the scenes. My T-SQL query up at the top, I passed in display name as care, which is a data type that supports Unicode. It's very precise. But my table, I switched in the background, and I made a table that just had care for display name instead of care. So SQL Server tried to compare a Unicode variable to a non-Unicode string, and guess what SQL Server said? Well, Unicode is more precise, nvercare is more precise than vercare, so I'm going to roll up my sleeves again, and I'm going to convert every single row in the table to Unicode. I'm going to convert every one of those display names out to Unicode. This is a concept called implicit conversion, and it matters a lot when we're dealing with things like Entity Framework, Link, or N-Hibernate, where we build a generic data dictionary, and we assume that the database has Unicode-type data in there, NVercare. It's the default almost everywhere, but you're dealing with an older database that just has Vercare data. Now, tiny differences, things like tiny int to int, small int to int, those don't matter as much as jumping huge data type differences, strings to dates, GUIDs to strings. Um, and it's different in every single case. There's a great poster from Microsoft explaining all the differences and which ones work and which ones don't. So to recap here, first off, sargeability is a concept that means SQL Server can use your search arguments efficiently with indexes. What I'm also worried about, though, is that if something's not sargeable, it also can't use statistics correctly, and I'll get bad estimates for my execution plans. Implicit conversions are also a big sargeability problem. If I turn around and cast a, a Vercare data as nvercare or vice versa, I can run into some big surprises at execution plan type. Execution plan type. And then finally, index key order matters a lot for performance, too and it affects statistics as well. If something's in my where clause, it needs to be the first field in my index, or else I'm just going to end up scanning the whole thing, just like I do with implicit conversions. There's much more interesting stuff about how sargeability and predictability affect performance, too, and we'll cover those in the next modules.